Hello, come in, come in. You're the first here. Actually, you're the only one here. <laughs> but that's great. Listen, it's great to see you. I thought today um, we could learn and practice some idioms to talk about people. That's right. As you know, in IELTS speaking, it's really important to describe people and to know how to describe people. So this could be really useful for you. Let's do it. So, as you may well know, my name is Keith. What's your name, by the way? Right, nice, cool name. Well, um, oh, by the way, do you know that I run live lessons on YouTube every Tuesday and Thursday? Right, you knew. Yes, that's right, 10 o'clock in the morning, Spanish time, every Tuesday and Thursday. Keep coming. I think there's lots of interesting stuff to learn there. And if you want more resources, um, yeah, go and check out my website, keithspeakingacademy.com. There will be lots of new stuff coming there soon. So great. Listen, let's start talking about idioms. What is an idiom exactly? Idioms are fixed phrases whose meaning is different from the individual words. And often you can't guess the meaning by looking at the individual words, right? Idiomatic. So, for example, if I were to say, I think I've just put my foot in it. Put your foot in what? You mean you stood in some dog poo or something? No, I just told Sarah her ex-boyfriend is going to get married. I thought she knew, but she didn't. And now she's so upset. So when we say something that can accidentally upset or make somebody angry, um, we can say to put your foot in it. I put my foot in it, right? Or she put her foot in it, right? That's a simple idiom. It's not about putting your foot anywhere. That's not really the meaning. There's a wider meaning to say something by accident that will upset somebody. Great. Now then, do you know any idioms? Yeah, great. So, you know, we use idioms to get attention, especially in journalism, newspapers, blogs and articles. We often use it for humour. We can make jokes with it or just to emphasise or add colour to what we're trying to say. Um, in IELTS speaking, of course, it is um, a part, a key part of your vocabulary score is being able to use idiomatic uh, vocabulary. So it might be useful to know the different types of idioms that we can use as well. Let's have a look at those. So there are many different kinds of idioms, right? There are similes, metaphors, euphemisms, binomials, and proverbs, sayings. There's lots of kinds. And knowing what category an idiom comes from can sometimes help you to remember it and to use it. So let's have a look first at the different types of idiom. And then later we'll look in more detail specifically about idioms for people. Okay. Does that sound good? Great, hunky-dory. So, types of idioms. Let's look at similes first. Do you know any examples of similes? One of my favourite ones is um, they are like two peas in a pod. So similes are expressions comparing two things, usually using like or as, right? So as I said, um, my, my two brothers, I don't have two brothers, right? My brother and sister are like two peas in a pod, which means they are very, very similar, right? Because they are similar to two peas, which is the vegetable sitting in the pod, which holds the vegetable. <laughs> or we can say, um, Tom, my friend, 
He's very, very clever. He's as sharp as a knife. As sharp as a knife. So we're comparing Tom to a knife being very, very sharp. And that means he's clever or intelligent. So these are similes. What about metaphors? Metaphors are similar. Do you know any metaphors? So metaphors are similar, but we're not really comparing them to something. We are saying they are something. And we're taking maybe a, a thing or an object and personifying it, like making it like a person or making the person like the object, right? So, for example, Tom is as sharp as a knife, but Harry, <laughs> Harry at school, right, my schoolmate, he used to think two plus two was 22. <laughs> now, maybe creative, but the teacher said, duh, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. So he's not the sharpest tool in the shed means he is stupid not clever. So here we're saying he is, not like, but he is a tool in the shed. The shed is the place where you keep all the tools for gardening, right? Now let's look at binomials. Binomials are normally two words joined by a preposition, and that's usually and, right? Um, things like fish and chips, black and white. The and becomes an, black and white. Fish and chips. Okay. Do you know any binomials? Whoa, lovely. Okay, so binomials for people. Do you remember Sherlock Holmes? He's very calm and collected. Right. He's very he's as cool as a cucumber, actually. <laughs> That's the simile, remember? But he's calm and collected means he's very, very well, very calm. <laughs> Take another example. My wife. Right. Do you know what she does to relax? Well, she likes to surf the Internet. But me, mm, I'm not really into that. I much prefer listening to music. So we're quite different. We're like chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. Chalk is for writing on the board. Cheese, oh, delicious, with a bit of red wine. That's for eating. But we're like chalk and cheese. We're very different. Another binomial. That said, my wife is a very, very helpful person. And she will always be there to help come rain or shine come rain or shine. Here, rain or shine, another binomial, but with or, come rain or shine. She's very helpful, come rain or shine. Another category is euphemisms. And we use euphemisms um, to avoid offending people or saying words we're not comfortable with, right? So imagine the scenario. You're in the workplace with some colleagues, some of them you know, some of them you don't know very well. And they say, can you describe your boss? I mean, physically, what, what is she like? And what you're thinking is, well, um, she's short, she's fat, and she's old. <laughs> That's what you're thinking. But you can't say that. I mean, that might offend some people. Um, it's not very polite. So you use a euphemism, right? Instead of saying she's fat, you'd say, well, you know, she's she's big boned. <laughs> she's big boned. She's getting on a bit, right? So she's old. She's getting on a bit. And uh, a bit kind of humoristically. Um, and, you know, she's you could say she's vertically challenged, <laughs> vertically challenged. She's short, right? You could say she's vertically challenged <laughs> with a smile. So here are euphemisms are also idioms in order to say things you may not be comfortable with. Great. So next, sayings and proverbs. 
things like nothing ventured, nothing gained. Where there's a will, there's a way. Once bitten, twice shy. Right? Now, the challenge with proverbs and sayings is that they tend to have a bit of a message or a warning or advice, right? Be careful. There's also sometimes a moral message. You know, to be good, you need to do this. So they're often not appropriate for IELTS speaking. However, there is a trick you can use, right? So if you've learned nothing ventured, nothing gained, which means if you don't take a risk, you won't succeed, right? Now, you're not going to say to the examiner, Oh, Mr. Examiner, I'm going to try very hard today because nothing ventured, nothing gained. It doesn't sound natural at all, right? But what you can say is my uncle who runs a restaurant, right? He believes nothing ventured, nothing gained. And so he set up his own business. That's super simple and natural. He believes nothing ventured, nothing gained. Another saying, right, where there's a will, there's a way, meaning if you really want to do something, you can do it. You can find a way to do it, right? Um, so again, could you make an expression with he believes? Right, we're getting there. My example might be, my uncle, who runs a restaurant, right, he believes where there's a will, there's a way. So despite obstacles, when he set up his business, he managed to do it. So you can see, just say he believes. Or if you want to spice it up a little bit, um, he's the kind of person who believes. My uncle, right, he's the kind of person who believes nothing ventured, nothing gained. And he set up his own business. Could you give me an example? Nice. So it's a nice trick to help us use proverbs in IELTS speaking. Excellent. Okie dokie. Let's move on. Okie dokie. Okie dokie is a hokey dokie is a song. I mean, I mean, okie dokie. Okie dokie. Excellent. So listen, we've looked at different kinds of um, idioms, right? Um, let's now get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> That's the detail. Let's have a look at some idioms to talk about people. First of all, we've got to be the spitting image of. Can you say that with me? To be the spitting image of. I am the spitting image of my father. And it means I look exactly the same or very, very similar to somebody. Next, to be a loose cannon. <clears throat> to be a loose cannon. This is where somebody may talk and sometimes say bad things without realising it. Right? For example... My friend Alan, right? He's very talkative, but he is a loose cannon sometimes. He was down in the pub the other week with some colleagues. Two of them were Irish. And then Alan starts telling an Irish joke, making fun of the Irish. Mm, he's a loose cannon, right? He didn't realise that he might be offending them. Next, to get carried away. And this is when somebody talks a lot without realising they're talking too much. Alan is guilty of this. When he's telling a story, he gets carried away and he just carries on talking and talking and talking, right? It doesn't mean somebody picks him up and carries him away, although that might be a good idea sometimes, <laughs> but he just goes on talking too much. He gets carried away. The next one, to run in the family it runs in the family, means that it's a, a characteristic of most of the people in that family. So if a lot of people in the family are artistic or they're artists or painters and musicians, 
You could say, you know, art runs in the family. Being an artist runs in the family. The artistic spirit runs in the family. And here you can change the for my, your, his, right? Um, the entrepreneurial spirit runs in, in his family. So you could use this when you're describing somebody um, and you're talking about a characteristic they have, like, for example, being kind, right? Jane is very, very, she's a very kind person. She's very generous. Um, and, you know, being kind, I think, runs in her family. So a lot of the other members of her family are also very kind. Nice. Next, as bright as a button. A nice simile, as bright as as a button and we contract the as to as as bright as a button bright meaning really clever or intelligent the button these are the buttons right and if they're shiny and they're clean they're bright as bright as a button means you're intelligent and clever right jane is as bright as a button who do you know that is as bright as a button give me a sentence Nice. And does it run in the family? Hmm. Right. Good. Another one is to think on your feet, which means to think quickly, to react and improvise. OK, so in IELTS, right, the examiner can ask you surprise questions and you have to think on your feet. Right. So my uncle Tom, who runs the restaurant, right? He's not called Tom, but let's call him Tom for today. <laughs> My uncle Tom uh, can think on his feet. He has to think on his feet because so many unexpected things happen in the restaurant. What about you? Do you know somebody who can think on their feet? Very good. If they can think on their feet, if they can th 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 th, if they if they can think on their feet, they're probably as bright as a button. Lots of nice alliterations there, right? B b bright as a button. Think on your feet. Great pronunciation. Keep practicing. Next, a bosom friend. The bosom is just the chest part of the body. So a bosom friend is a close friend, right? This is kind of like a metaphor. Sarah is a bosom friend, right? We go back a long way. Ah, there's another. To go back a long way doesn't mean you're physically going back all the way to Manchester. It means we have known each other for a long time. We go back a long way. Sarah is a bosom friend. We go back a long way. Next, to know someone like the back of your hand. If you know somebody or something like the back of your hand, it's assumed you know them very well, right? I know her like the back of my hand. Give me an example. And this, yes, you can probably use for family members, right? I know my sister like the back of my hand. Or my university friend, um, Alan. Yeah, he's a bosom friend. We go back a long way. I know him <coughs> like the back of my hand. <coughs> yes, it's okay to cough in IELTS speaking. Well, not these days. We have to have the mask, right? But let's move on. To hit it off. And that would connect probably to say to hit it off. Hit it off. Hit it off. Great. We hit it off. We hit it off as soon as we met. Great. To hit it off means to get on very well. Right. The first time I met Alan, we hit it off straight away. Nice. To see eye to eye. To see eye to eye just means 
to agree, right? So although I've known Alan for donkey's years, right? We go back a long way. He's a bosom friend. And although we hit it off when we first met, uh, we don't always see eye to eye. We don't always agree to see eye to eye. Next, um, a woman after my own heart or a man after my own heart. Right now, this means that you are very similar and you admire the other person's thinking or philosophy or way of living. Right. So I can say to a, a man, oh, you're a man after my own heart, which means we do things and we think in a similar way. And I like that. It doesn't mean that I love you. It's nothing about heart being in love. It just means that we are similar and we think in a similar way, right? She's a woman after my own heart. For example, I have a friend, right, who's trying to teach her children to cook, even though they're very, very young. I think that's fantastic. I think we should get children into the kitchen very, very young. She's a woman after my own heart, right? We think in similar ways. Great. Next, to be second to none. Second to none means to be the very best. OK, um, so, for example, the food in Spain is second to none. It's really good. It's the very best. Talking about people, you can take any activity somebody does and say, when it comes to cooking, she's second to none. When it comes to singing, she's second to none. When it comes to helping others, he's second to none. Right? They're very best at that activity. Take the activity of playing football. What could you say? Yes, when it comes to playing football, he's second to none. Starting a business. When it comes to starting a business, she is second to none, right? The very best at doing it. Great. Talking about helping people, um, we have the expression to go out on a limb. Now, a limb is like the arm or the leg. It's one part of the body that sticks out. Um, arms and legs are our limbs. So to go out on a limb means to to try really hard to help somebody and even to take a risk, but to help somebody, right? Um, so I will go out on a limb to help my best friend, right? If they need to borrow the car or they need to borrow some money, I will try my best. I will go out on a limb to help them. To be highly strung. To be highly strung means to be um, a little bit nervous and to be upset easily. So somebody who is always nervous, a little bit tense and easily upset, right? Yep. Yeah. I don't like your shirt. What do you mean you don't like my shirt? It's, it's a beautiful shirt. <laughs> highly strung, <laughs> very tense, very easily upset, right? Um, I have a colleague. Well, I used to have a colleague at work. Um, every day. I mean, she was very highly strung. People would say the smallest thing. And if she thought it was negative, she would fly off the handle, fly off the handle, get upset, right? She was very, very highly strung. So you had to be careful what you said next to her. To be a know-it-all, know-it-all as a noun, a know-it-all is a person who thinks they know everything, right? Of course they don't. Nobody does. But somebody who's maybe arrogant and thinks they know everything, well, he's a know-it-all. So slightly negative connotation, right? Yeah, you may have a boss like that who thinks, you know, they know everything and they tell you and like, you know, my boss, he's a know-it-all, so it's not a compliment. It's a little bit of a criticism. 
Next, she doesn't suffer fools gladly. To suffer fools. A fool is like a stupid person. Gladly means happily. So to happily be with stupid people, then it's not that. <laughs> so she's not happy about being with stupid people. She doesn't suffer fools gladly. So that means she will, you know, be quite strict and punish people who make mistakes. This is very common in the business workplace where your boss can be quite strict. And if people make mistakes, they punish them and they're very, very tough with them because they're not happy with stupid people. Of course, it's not stupid. They just made a mistake. But the expression is he doesn't suffer fools gladly right so be careful with that boss because he's very strict and he will punish you right because he doesn't suffer fools gladly similarly he will come down on you like a ton of bricks metaphor a ton is a large weight bricks to build the house like a stone Imagine a ton of bricks falling on you. Oof, not nice, right? So when somebody is going to punish you quite strictly, they come down on you like a ton of bricks. So be careful with that boss because he doesn't suffer fools gladly. And if you make a mistake, he will come down on you like a ton of bricks. <laughs> and finally, to be set in your ways. That's somebody who doesn't like change. So sometimes older people, maybe booba, booby boomers, <laughs> baby boomers, <laughs> whoops, maybe baby boomers um, are set in their ways, right? Actually, my, you know, my grandfather, he's set in his ways. He can't change. Who do you know that is set in their ways? Good. And remember, the pronoun will change. So he is set in his ways. I am set in my ways. Right. Great. So here we have lots of idioms to describe people. We're going to finish up now with a little story introducing two people. And let's see these idioms in action. This is Adam. And this is Adam's father. Adam is the spitting image of his father. And as you can see, they're both vertically challenged. Adam's very talkative, but he's a loose cannon at times. Last week, he was having a drink with some new colleagues, two of whom were Irish, and he started telling jokes about Irish people. You know, he really put his foot in it. Mind you, his father... Right? He does the same. He's always putting his foot in it. I think it must run in the family. That said, Adam is as bright as a button, right? And he can think on his feet. For example, when he's in a meeting, he can present ideas clearly without preparation. Now, this is Sarah. She's a bosom friend of Adam's. They go back a long way. And they hit it off as soon as they met each other. Adam knows Sarah like the back of his hand. <clears throat> Mind you, they don't always see eye to eye. When it comes to helping out others, Sarah is second to none. She's always ready to go out on a limb to help a friend if you need to borrow money or just someone to talk to. As for her personality, well, she's not very expressive. In fact, she's as cool as a cucumber. <clears throat> she works in a bank. She's also a little highly strung. She always seems to be in a rush, shouting at people in her office. And with the smallest negative comment from anyone, she'll fly off the handle. At times, I feel sorry for her co-workers because she doesn't suffer fools gladly. If you make a mistake, she'll be down on you like a ton of bricks. She really is set in her ways. So as you can see, Adam and Sarah, 
They are like chalk and cheese. So that's it. Listen, it's been great being with you today. Thank you so much for coming along. I've really enjoyed it. I hope this can um, help you. We should do this more often, right? Do come along to the live lessons if you want to practice. And I guess that's an important point, right? You've seen lots of idioms today, but really the key is in the practice. So if you need so what you need to do now is start practicing that. If you're looking for a speaking partner, why not pop along to my Facebook group? You can look for it in Facebook, Keith's IELTS Mastermind Community. Lots of people there, very active and also looking for speaking partners. And then you can start putting this into practice, which is where you really step up your level. Thanks for joining me today. Do remember, if you haven't yet, um, to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, and I can't wait to see you next time. In the meantime, take care. All the best now. Bye-bye.